Hello, dummies of the gun world. I figured I would put together a video to try to help people understand why a 1911 carried cocked and locked is actually safer than the striker fires, which became uber popular, I think, with a Glock. Now, let me understand, I don't have a Glock. I don't like a Glock, can't shoot a Glock, but as many of you may already know, the Smith & Wesson M and P, which was came off of the Sigma line, uh, was actually a bit of a copy of a Glock on the internals, and they had to pay a little bit of money. Smith and Wesson had to pay out a little bit of money to Glock for such because they uh, evidently didn't think. Um, I'm not going to bash a Glock for reliability. They shoot just like anybody else. The reason I don't like them is I don't like the grip angle of a Glock. I like a little bit more upright grip angle, a little less that European steepness to it. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's going to shoot. Um, so don't take this as a anti-Glock video. Well, this is about 1911s and the safety of them being carried cocked and locked. Now, what you have to understand um, is how a gun works. Most people don't know much more about a gun about outside of taking a slide off and wiping it down. Um, this 1911 I built, it started out as a Remington R1 and I filled it full of Wilson Combat. Uh, did a lot of customizing, a little hand honing, put in the excess uh, tritium sights, which I love these by the way. Um, this is a beautiful, well, I mean a nice fine shooting firearm. So um, anyway, um, I'm going to use this one as my demonstration. Um, now, I'm not going to waste time emptying these guns out for your proof because in the entire world of the internet, no one has ever been shot through the interwet. All right, so if, if I took either one of these guns and shot the camera, the bullet's not going to go into the memory card and then onto my computer and then upload it to YouTube and then whenever you actually watch the video the bullet's not going to come flying out of the screen and kill you um understand you are safe all right so i'm not doing that silly stupid stuff now you gotta uh, going back to the safety issue which is the point of this video um on a smith and west mp or striker fired firearm you you have no safety now some of them they, they do have optional safeties um and this one right here it's actually marked for a safety um, but uh, most of them did not have them. It was optional depending on, I guess, you know, local laws or people's preference. They originally came out without a safety. The Glock does not have an active safety. Uh, the Glock safety is the safe action trigger, uh, which is the same thing as here. The only difference is, is on a Glock, the, the safe action trigger is on the inside of the, of the frame, and, and this one is on the outside. Um, the only safety on this gun, if, if you chambered around in this gun, the only safety outside of your trigger finger is that little piece of plastic right there. If you'll notice that whenever you pull the articulated trigger, that little piece of plastic sweeps up out of the way. Now if you pull the trigger high, it hits. If the gun fell, the kinetic energy would cause it to hit if it was able to move it. But it literally does nothing more than that little piece of plastic hits a little piece of plastic there. Or that's it. The only other safety on this firearm is what people refer to as the Series 80. The Series 80 is this right in here, that little plunger. That little plunger blocks the firing pin. And that plunger is pushed up out of the way as the trigger is being pulled. It's just a backup so that you don't have an inadvertent dropping of the firing pin. So whenever the firing pin is back, it's held into position by the sear. And if you drop the gun and then say the energy of the, of the gun hitting the ground in the right position, if the sear was able to hit and move, it would technically drop the firing pin. Because that's all this is. The firing pin is right there and you'll see it moves back and forth. When it's back, it gets captured by the sear. When you pull the trigger, it drops it, allowing this to fly forward, strike the round. Uh, at the primer shooting the gun, but this right here, this is the, the Series 80 block. This is a, uh, a plunger. Uh, some people call it a firing pin block or whatever else you want to call it, but essentially as you pull the trigger, 
this is pushed up out of the way. Um, and of course, as you pull the trigger, it drops the sear, and that's it. So if you chamber around in a striker fired pistol, the only safeties that you have is your trigger finger. There's nothing that really prevents it from, from falling if the trigger's pulled. It's going to fire the gun. Um, that said, there is this little piece of plastic here, and there's the firing pin block, which is not an active safety. It's a passive safety. It's, it's pushed up out of the way as you pull the trigger. So you don't have to turn a safety off on this gun. You just have to pick it up and pull the trigger. Now, that's the same for all Glocks and most other striker fired pistols. Uh, like I said, some of them are optional, some most are not. Now, that said, people would have no problem carrying a Glock or a similar striker fired pistol loaded, chambered in, and they think that they are safer carrying that firearm loaded, ready to go, hot versus a cocked and locked 1911. They see this they see this uh, this hammer back and they think, oh dear God, that gun could just go off at any moment and kill everybody in a busload of nuns and set a church on fire. Here's the deal. You have to understand how a 1911 works. Um, whenever you put this safety on, well, let me go back. This hammer in the rear cocked position is no different than the firing pin held by the sear in this gun. It's the kinetic energy used to set off the primer. That's all it is. It's captured. This one's captured by the sear. This hammer's captured by the sear. Now the difference between the two is this, this, and the Series 80. When you thumb the safety on a 1911, you're doing three things. The first and obvious thing is you're blocking the slide. The second thing that you're doing is the uh, safety is engaging into the detent of a hammer, preventing the hammer from moving. The third thing it's doing is it's locking the sear in place, preventing movement. So that right there has got three safeties, slide, hammer, and sear. Now, that said, just thumbing off this safety by itself is, does nothing. You can thumb that safety off and you can pull that trigger all day long. Guess what? It still don't fire because you have a grip safety. If you have the safety on and you grip the gun, you still can fire it. With the safety off and a grip, you can drop the hammer at that point. Okay? Now, the also, the also the other thing that I wanted to show you is you have to understand this. I removed mine. You also have the Series 80. See that little hole right there? Uh, I deleted mine. I turned this gun into a Series 70. Uh, you'll hear that a lot about the 1911s. You'll hear about the Series 70 versus Series 80. A lot of the custom gun makers, uh, you know. Uh, most Kimbers and Wilson Combats and you know Nighthawk and other companies like such, they don't make Series 80 guns. It's usually your big box stores like, say, Remington uh, that make them in Series 80. And it works as the same principle as it blocks the firing pin because that hammer strikes the firing pin and that firing pin moves forward striking the primer. So it's again, it's nothing more than a firing pin block. Now, I've deleted mine. The reason I deleted mine is because this is a uh, uh, my gun and I carry it and it series 80 in a um, in a 1911 is activated two different ways. You can it can be activated by gripping or deactivated by gripping the uh, uh, grip safety, but in mo mine was like most and it deactivates by a trigger pull. Now, if it deactivates by the trigger pull, technically the mechanism that pushes that out of the way, the plunger up, uh, you actually can, f that, that weight of the spring and the plunger and the mechanism uh, is counts against your trigger pull. And everything in a 1911, the reason people love a 1911 is that beautiful trigger. It doesn't take nothing to get a three pound trigger on one of these guns. I mean, literally no real custom work whatsoever. Now, um, just to show you an idea, I don't know where my Series 80 parts are, but uh, these are the uh, items 
that are built into the gun and they work off the back of the trigger bow. Um, this is a trigger bow. Uh, so whenever you pull the trigger, these levers working off of the pins, which mostly are hidden behind the safety, actually, in result, pushes this up, which mashes the plunger out of the way, which is why people delete these out. You can buy the little delete kits and put them in there and get rid of this, this, and the plunger, and it works like a Series 70 or like an early Colt-style gun. Now, some 1911 manufacturers, they decided to change that, and they used the Series 80 parts, Series 80 uh, safety parts, and it actually deactivates based on the grip and that is nice because it that way you can leave the series 80 in there and still be able to manage an exceptional trigger um, so mine wasn't that way so i took it out it's a very common uh, upgrade to a 1911 if you have the, one of the uh, series 80s now just to show you folks where some of these other safeties come in the grip safety works like this and whenever you squeeze the gun this blocks the back of the trigger bow and when you squeeze the grip this moves up out of the way allowing the trigger to come back so with the grip no grip on the gun you can't move the trigger and if you can't move the trigger you can't move the sear and if you can't move the sear you can't release the hammer all right now that's safety one then you have the thumb safety these are the old ones that i took out of the gun because this used to be a mill spec this like i said we already know it blocks the slide by the little detail right there but the two things that this thing does on top of that is the safety itself which all this stuff has to be custom fitted there none, none of these things are uh are just drop in ready this also fits into this detent right there and it blocks the back of the sear the way the sear releases the hammer is it has to pivot forward allowing it to break and move the hammer forward. Now, if the sear is engaged, it's a crappy video. <laughs> I'm sure I get some people bitching and griping over this. So anyway, when the sear is engaged, like I said, it has to work as a, as a fulcrum off of that pinhole. So whenever the safety is thumbed up, it blocks it, not allowing it to rock forward, allowing the hammer to rotate forward. So the thumb safety blocks the sear, blocks the hammer, blocks the slide. The grip safety blocks the trigger. And you also have the firing pin safety or the uh, firing pin block, which is a series 80. So let's count the safeties in a 1911. This does three actions. This does fourth action and this does the fifth action. There are five safeties to prevent a 1911 from going off while it's carried cocked and locked. Five. A striker fired pistol has a piece of plastic and has the, uh, the firing pin block which works off of a trigger pull. So if you were unfamiliar with the 1911 and if you feared carrying a 1911 because you thought that carrying one cocked and locked was just so dangerous and nuns were going to die and children were going to be, be homeless and whatever else if you carried one all bad things were going to happen it's not it's not at all you have multiple safeties as i've shown you today that actually help you prevent inadvertent firing of a 1911 so if you carry a 1911 cocked and locked you have to grip it you have to turn the safety off and then you have the only safety your other gun has is your trigger finger all right three actions five safeties one action just your trigger finger so don't fear the cocked and locked 1911 folks buy one enjoy one it's kind of like owning an old camaro or a mustang they're just bad to the bone Anyway, I hope this video helps some folks understand why the Cocked and Locked 1911 is not an unsafe option. Anyway, enjoy. Everybody go down in the comments and bitch and gripe like everyone else does. Armchair expert, whatever. Later.